that Petrovsky. I thought in the second round he looked under terrible pressure at times, but again, he summoned up a huge effort to win the final round. Two scores of 28-28 went his way. Different kind of fight in the quarterfinal against Gurlan Congo, who again is also a small heavyweight, so similar in size, the pair of them. And he just squeezed through on a 3-2 split. Russian national champion. He has been through the fire on the way to the final. Well, here comes a man who has been around the block plenty of times. He's been everywhere. He's boxed at absolutely everything you could possibly name. He's been to Olympic Games. He's been to Commonwealth Games. He's been to Pan American Games. He's been to numerous world championships. Prior to this, his best result was a bronze medal at the American Championships in 2017. And at 32 years of age, he is now guaranteed at least a bronze at the world championships. And it's good to see quite frankly, because he's achieved a kind of longevity in the sport that not many people do, particularly in this highest weight division. And he's got through a wins against Nelson Heiser, Ayub Gadfer, and Berat Akar of Turkey in his quarter final. He'll be the bigger man. So once again, Petrovsky will be giving away size, but he's used to that. Petrovsky just banging his gloves together in the red corner as he waits for... Nigel Paul, who just throws a big long leg over that top rope. I always find that impressive when somebody just <laughs> steps over the top rope. You could do it. Ron McIntosh <laughs> could do it. I definitely couldn't do it. Thunderlips. <laughs> <laughs> so these two called to the middle. Final instructions and a touch of gloves. Petrovsky of the Russian Boxing Federation, who, as I say, has shown an unbelievable amount of grit to get this far. He's in the red. Nigel Paul of Trinidad Tobago in the blue. Ten years separating these two in terms of age. Petrovsky just looking to try and dip in and jab to the body early on there. He had to stay patient against Barrett Akar, Nigel Paul, and win the final round, which he did. to get through to this semi-final stage. Fighter in blue just looking for the jab. Petrovsky again just stealing in and landing that lead left to the body. Left hook. Just landed a glancing blow there. Scoring punch, very easy to see. Scoring punch as well. That's not to be underestimated. For the judges at ringside, the easier to see the punches are than the more straightforward a job it is to, to score in either fighter's favour. Just backed up to the ropes there, Nigel Paul, and Petrovsky just steps in, lets his hands go. I don't think a huge amount of that got through. Jab there from Paul off the back foot. Minute gone in round number one, just hooking off the jab there. The Trinidadi, and again, Petrovsky just touching him to the body, nothing major, trying to keep that head on the move as he's on the kind of borderline of range there. Again, just slips the jab and lands the jab to the body. Every now and again has led off with that lead left there, Petrovsky. Rolling off to the right. Head movement is key here for him. Uppercut aimed there by Paul, but just taken on the gloves. Parried by Petrovsky. That's a good jab from Paul. Petrovsky looking to move in again. Paul just giving a little bit of ground and Backing up to the ropes. I think he might be well advised to try and get on the jab a little bit more, try and impose that jab a bit more, the fighter in, in blue. Right hand there did land. Petrovsky had pulled the head back, though, so did manage to ride it. I don't think that one did quite get that, that right hand that time. Petrovsky with good head movement here. He's managing to stay out of the way of those lefts and rights of Paul by just being on the borderline of range, slipping punches effectively and has managed to score to the body. So heading into the final 30 seconds of the round, he is probably winning this round as it currently stands, but it wouldn't take Paul to land much to equalize the fairly light punching that Petrovsky has done so far. Decent looking jab there from Paul, and then a nice right hand upstairs from Petrovsky. 
stepped into that one. Jab came back from Paul, and Petrovsky looks to try and crawl all over him on the inside. He'll engage when he needs to. He's not frightened of doing that. He's shown us that throughout the course of the competition so far. Paul just chases him across the ring a little bit there, and that's uh, that's a well-boxed round, I think, by the red corner. Yep, I agree entirely. And I think his sheer presence is seeing Nigel Paul box on the perimeter of the boxing ring, using a good jab effectively, but I think it's one of these contests as Petrovsky takes it on a 4-1 split. But by having Nigel Paul pinned to the back foot, from a judge's perspective, he appears to be the man trying to make the contest. And without wishing to sound ridiculous, because we're in a super heavyweight division, Nigel Paul's work could be construed as a little bit negative and as though he's trying to steal it rather than take it. He did come forwards when, as you say, he chased him across the ring in the closing stages. But I think if he hopes to turn the contest in his favour, because he is boxing well on the back foot with fluid straight shots, I think he's going to have to impose himself and try and get on the front foot a little bit more. Agreed, agreed. He is the bigger man. He's got the longer reach. I think he has to try and impose that that height, that reach that comes with it, with it, that physicality a bit. And he's immediately taken the centre of the ring here and looked to try and back Petrovsky up behind that jab because he is giving away size here. And you look at the, the eyes of Petrovsky, he's, he's been on the end of some, some painful stuff during the course of the week. I've seen it all and you couldn't help but be enormously impressed by his, his fighting spirit because he is a small super heavyweight, right hand to the to the body there from, from Paul, and then just sticks with a, a straight right as well. Petrovsky's turned southpaw there, right at the start of the round pretty much. Right hand from Paul, I think found slightly better range. Just trying to measure that right with the lead left, trying to land a big uppercut, didn't quite manage to do it. Petrovsky just inching forward, throws the left, moves on to the shoulder. Paul with a jab, that's a good jab. He's got the distance with that better in this round. And now it's Petrovsky who's working around that clock face more and being forced to work in the outer, more outer reaches of the ring. Couple of good jabs there, then followed by the uppercut. Then he's just getting a bit of momentum going here. Nigel Paul, long right hand gets through. Right lands on the forearms, but don't underestimate the effect that a heavy shot, although blocked, can have, particularly at super heavy, Petrovsky trying to keep that head on the move, gets up close, lets his hands go as Paul just sinks into the corner, but he's straight out of the corner and looking to get back on the jab. Just over a minute remaining in round number one. And it's the fighter in blue who you would say has had the better of this round so far, but he needs to keep that going. Petrovsky is a clever fighter. He'll be aware that this might be going against him at the moment and we'll know that he'll need to do a little bit more, need to do something to catch the eye. Trying to work to the body on the inside, gets the shoulder in on Paul and just leans on him in the corner there and Paul just kind of allowing that to happen. So back to the centre of the ring, these two go. Left hand there from Petrovsky. Paul with a lead left, and Petrovsky is trying to work hard towards the end of the round here. Climbs into a left hand. That was a decent left hand, but a short right hand on the inside there from Paul. And Petrovsky's just trying to swarm Paul a bit here. Land as much as he can, certainly, but throw as much as he can and look as busy to the judges as he can for the final stages here. And lets his hands go and does find some punches to the body on the inside as the... As the clapper goes with 10 seconds to go. Now, for me, that's a, a round that was dominated by Blue for the first two minutes. But Petrovsky, as we said, he's a clever fighter. He needed to do something towards the end, and he did. Most certainly. But I think that contest, as we suggested, showed a completely different complexion when Nigel Paul got onto the front foot. Sometimes he was countered, but it just changed the entire dynamic of the bout. Now, when you pointed it out, when the man turned southpaw, it's a 3 2 split in favour of Petrovsky. So again, testimony to the better work that Nigel Paul did. When Petrovsky turned southpaw, Nigel Paul, not that it caught him out, because you're going to expect that at this level, but he did back up again. And when he backed up, I think it brings Petrovsky right into the contest. 
And when Petrovsky did try to get busy with his increased activity, sometimes I felt Nigel Paul, like there, was just a little bit guilty of allowing the roughhouse tactics to be employed by Petrovsky. I think you've got to take a risk, damn the rule book, and put your considerable bulk onto the smaller man and try and wear him out. We're going to the final round then. So here we go, third and final round. Nigel Paul, Trinidad and Tobago in the blue. Petrovsky, Russian Boxing Federation in the red. He's got two cards with a two-point lead of 20 points to 18. The other level, the other three level at 19 apiece. So this is still in the, in the balance here. Nigel Paul needs all three of those level cards. Petrovsky needs one of them. So the Russian does have an advantage, but he was clever in the closing stages of that round. Petrovsky, nice little right hand on the inside there from Paul over on the far side of the ring, and Petrovsky just, just leaning in, and I just echo something that, that Ron said, that he, he can't really allow that to happen here, Nigel Paul. He's a bigger man of the two. You don't allow Petrovsky to get his head on your shoulder like he is here and push you back into the ropes. You've got to get a hold of him, turn him, Walking back across the ring, he's got to be dominating those types of of clinches, and I think that worked towards the end of the the end of the round. Just just nicked that round on the split for Petrovsky, who again here is well, he's trying to old man Nigel Paul. It's uh, it's a phrase we used a couple of fights ago, and it's running the clock down a little bit at times. He does need to win the fight with one of these judges who's got it level, and there's nothing in this final round so far, really. The leaning on for Petrovsky could also be a sign that he's a little bit tired. Solid right hand there from Paul on the inside, of course. It could be an indicator of that, and maybe that greater physical size has been brought to bear a bit more than we thought, a bit more than it looks like. But at the minute, this kind of mauling around on the inside he's probably suiting the red corner a bit more than the blue he's got to find a bit of distance a bit of space here Nigel Paul to get those long levers working Petrovsky catches an uppercut on the inside there and that was pretty heavy Nigel Paul landed another one Petrovsky gets into that middle distance there sets his feet for an uppercut Nigel Paul just short with a big Right hand up the middle again there, Petrovsky just disengages, rattles a few punches off. One of thing just snuck in around the back of the guard. The referee talking to Paul about keeping his, his head up, Petrovsky with a, a combination there, scored a couple of times to the body, definitely. And again, he's just pouring it all out here, Petrovsky, letting those hands go. Paul cannot match that hand speed. And with a handful of seconds remaining, Left hand lands there from Paul, and right towards the end, there's a standing count. Paul landed right towards the end, and that could be absolutely huge. That could be absolutely massive. Petrovsky was looking to just finish the bout in style there. He was winning that round, Petrovsky, for me, Ron. He was winning that round right up until the closing stages there. Has that one shot turned this around? Because Petrovsky's got a 20 points to 18 lead on two cards going into this final round. The other three level at 19-19. So he needs one of them. Paul needs all of them. Has he done it right at the death? Well, this is going to be a test as to how the Aiba judges interpret the significance of a knockdown because we've been at pains to say 10-9 for a close round, 10-8 for a clear round, 10-7 for total domination. And we've seen throughout Aiba boxing, a boxer that gets sent to the floor often wins 10-9. It's not an automatic 10-8 as it is in the professional code. So how significant will it be? I happen to think that the greater industry and greater looking activity will favor the man in red. But what say the judges? Well, Petrovsky gets it, and a huge exhale there from Nigel Paul. A little smile on his face. He would have been desperately hoping he just did enough, and Petrovsky's won that final round on four out of the five cards. The question really was, was that final round tight enough and in the balance enough that that right hand, that really nice solid shot, would do enough to turn it around? In the end, it wasn't, and I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I think Petrovsky was in the lead. 
He looked to finish in style. He got caught, as you always can in this top division. And that just made it very spicy towards the end. Very, very interesting indeed. And I tell you what, he has been in close fight after close fight after close fight all the way through this competition, Petrovsky. You cannot say that he hasn't earned his way through to a gold medal fight because he absolutely has. You just need to look at his face to see what's been happening to him in the rounds that he's had in that, that squared circle up in front of us. But congratulations to Nigel Paul. He takes a bronze medal in the World Championships, medalling at the Worlds for the first time at the age of 32. So that's a terrific effort from him. But Petrovsky, well, he's the kind of fighter who would become a bit of a fan's favourite. You know, if you're somebody who pulls for the underdog because he is a small super heavy, then you're always going to enjoy watching somebody like him. So he goes through to the super heavyweight final where... Again, he's going to be giving away an unbelievable